Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve and today we are going to be doing a complete setup on this beautiful Fender Telecaster Deluxe. So let's get going. All right, let me know if this has ever happened to you. You have a couple guitars, you enjoy playing them, but one of them eventually just starts to sit over in the corner and every time you pick it up it just doesn't feel quite right and it doesn't sound quite right so then you put it back down and you grab a different guitar um, that sounds better you're more comfortable playing and this is the case with my son Joey my 22 year old son um, yeah he's got a number of guitars on his own now he's the one that just released an album um, doing great musically but this is a guitar of his that when he first got it, he loved it. He loved this guitar. And then over time, he's gotten a few other guitars. And he told me, he goes, the other day, he said, every time I pick this up, it's just, I, I think it needs a setup. It's, you know, the intonation's out. It could be perfectly in tune. And then I play up higher and um, it's, it's out of tune. And it's just, it needs intonation set up. And it just probably needs a full setup. Um, and I said, well, why don't, you know, why don't I set it up for you and, and see, let's see what the difference is that um, it makes for you. So in any case, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this guitar. It's a uh, Fender Telecaster Deluxe uh, dual humbuckers. And I actually plan on, so we're going to take the strings off and um, we're going to do a bunch of just general like cleaning slash maintenance uh, that I do every time I change strings. But then we're going to walk through a setup process, and I have not invented all this. Um, the, what I'm going to walk through today is I've stole from a bunch of creators on YouTube and, and people that I've known over the years, um, tips and things like that. I started playing guitar in the early 80s, and honestly, it wasn't until probably the last 10 years that I started doing work on my own guitars. And the reason was, number one, it wasn't available back then. We didn't have YouTube and we couldn't just, you know, look up how to set your action on a guitar. And it was this knowledge that was just with, you know, you know, held by just a few people uh, that worked at, you know, music stores or guitar shops or things like that. And it was a mystery to me, like the different screws and the different um, things that you could do to a guitar. I didn't. You know, I didn't have the money to like break anything, so I was too worried about breaking my guitars or something like that. Um, so I never messed with them, and I didn't actually have a lot of money to always get professional setups done. I actually had that done very, very rarely did I have professional setups done on my guitars. So for decades, I lived with kind of guitars that weren't set up that great, and I'm ashamed to say that but it's true. So now that I'm older and obviously we have <laughs> all kinds of resources with YouTube and everything out there, um, there's no reason why the average person like you and I can't go ahead and set up our own guitar. Um, it doesn't take a ton of tools to do. The tools are fairly inexpensive. A lot of them you may already just have in your garage or in your uh, toolbox. So we're gonna walk through the tools that you need as we do the process. Um, again, there's great resources out there. Um, I'm going to put some videos in the link. Uh, Music Nomad is a company that makes a lot of guitar tools, and they put together some great video resources. Um, so I I basically stole a lot of content from them because I just liked how they organized their, their message. But I feel like there's value in me putting a video out there because sometimes, you know, the guys in these videos, they've been setting up guitars for decades. And I think it's good for people out there like me to realize, you know what, you don't have to have worked in the back room of a music store for the last 30 years to be able to set up a guitar. Um, you maybe just started playing guitar six months ago and you wanna learn how to set it up to make it play better, make it sound better. So this is something that anybody can do, honestly. Uh, it's not rocket science. So that's the reason why I thought it'd be helpful for me to create a video. Even though there's already great content out there and there's people that walk you through a lot of these steps, probably better than, than I will, but I feel like 
you know what? There's value in you guys seeing somebody that's just a regular guy that for decades never took a screwdriver to his guitar ever for fear of doing damage to it or doing something that I couldn't undo or something like that. So I guess the main purpose of this video is not to just show you how knowledgeable I am in terms of setting up a guitar, but just that this is something that you can do. You don't have to have some kind of college degree. You don't have to go off for a six month study, you know, at some guitar monastery. You can just learn how to set up a guitar on your own. And for me, the whole purpose of this channel, as I've mentioned before, I love all things music. And I love guitar and bass and drums and keyboards and recording equipment and photography and uh, video editing, all kinds of stuff. And all of those different things, there's, there's obviously my wish list for all those different areas is just enormous. Uh, there's always something else I you know, like to have the money to buy. So I'm always looking at saving money. How can I save money? Well, instead of paying $60 or $100 to a music store to have a setup done on a guitar, especially when I own a lot of guitars, it's probably worth a small investment in tools and then just the knowledge and practice to be able to do this myself. And that's going to save me over, you know, the lifetime of playing guitar, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of dollars of being able to do this by myself. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in to doing a complete setup on this guitar. Okay, so before we dive in, let's go ahead and just hear how it sounds before we do anything to it, okay? tell right off the bat, once we get higher on the fretboard, the intonation is definitely out. An intonation is just basically a fretted note being in tune with a non-fretted note or an open string. So um, I think the setup's going to help a lot, so let's jump in. All right, we've got the guitar on the bench. I don't do this every single day, so I don't have all these steps memorized and I thought it would be good to put together kind of a cheat sheet on all the steps here. So I did that and it's going to be in the, in the description in a link that you guys can go ahead and download this document. But basically on one side, I just have, you know, basic guitar maintenance. Whenever I do a string change, kind of types of things I do uh, just to maintain a guitar. And then on the other side is all the steps for the setup process. So let's just walk through those real quick. First, we're going to set the neck relief. Then we're going to set the bridge radius. Then we're going to set the action height. After that, the nut height. Set the intonation. And finally, set the pickup height. So those are the main six steps of a setup. And uh, of course, they can vary a little bit between different types of guitars and what type of bridge you have. I have some guitars that have a Floyd Rose tremolo. I have another guitar that has a Bixby tremolo. I have a fixed bridge guitar. Um, I have another guitar with a Kaler tremolo, older guitar. So depending on what kind of bridge you have, um, if it has a locking nut or not, some of these steps are slightly different. But in general, I put some notes on here for the different types of guitars that you'll encounter. So, I don't know. I think it could be helpful for you. Feel free to go out there and just download the PDF. So first we're going to take off the strings. Okay, so the first thing on the checklist after removing the strings, I'm going to polish the frets. And I do that with these things called fret erasers. You can buy them in three packs, you can buy them in five packs, but basically it is a rubber type material that has different grits. So this three pack has a 180 grit, which is the green, 400 grit is yellow, and a thousand grit is the blue. So generally what I do 
is I take a pass over each of the frets, starting at the lowest grit, the roughest, and then working my way up to the thousand, which is basically the polish at that point. Um, what this is going to do is remove any grime and, you know, slight imperfections or, you know, dents, sometimes pressing on your strings in certain spots all the time, gives you a little divot. So this will help smooth out the frets and polish them at the same time. They do have things called fret guards, which will lay over the fret. Um, so this eraser cannot damage the uh, fretboard. And I actually, I used to have some and I've actually placed more on order. Um, but for today, what I'm gonna do is just use some low tack masking tape and just tape off the frets first. And uh, I wanna make sure I don't damage the fretboard as I'm doing the fret polishing. Okay, so the neck is all taped up now and I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the 180 grit. Make several even passes back and forth on each of the frets. So now we're going to move on to the 400 grit and I use about the same six or seven passes total. And lastly, I'll move on to the 1000 grit. That's how you polish the frets. Okay, so I have all the tape off now. The next step in the process is to just clean this fretboard. And for a maple neck like this, it's a little different than a rosewood um, fretboard or an ebony fretboard. So on other guitars like rosewood, you've probably heard you want to use something like a lemon oil um, on the rosewood. That's a natural wood that does not have any finish on it, whereas maple necks have, have a gloss finish they put on them. So you don't want to use lemon oil. You want to use basically a guitar cleaner like a Dunlop 65 is what I use. This is a really good cleaner for maple fretboards as well as just pretty much most guitars. Um, it's just an all-around good cleaner. I think this is like five bucks and it goes for a long time. So, you know, you invest money in your instruments, spend five bucks and get some real guitar polish. Uh, it'll go a long way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray some on the cloth and then we're gonna work on the neck with that. You can see we are getting some dirt here, but in general, this neck was pretty clean, this fretboard. So that is looking really good. I'm gonna give you guys a close-up so you can see. So here's a close-up. You can see the polished frets now, the very clean fretboard. Just looks really good. Frets are one of those things that they can get pretty nasty over time. Uh, so, the fret erasers do a great job. And then of course, just the, the cleaning solution over top here. So next, while I have all the strings off, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe the whole guitar down with this Dunlop 65. Uh, I know during the setup, I'll probably get a few more smudges on it and things like that, and I can touch that up later, but it is nice to be able to get at everything with the strings off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the next step I'm going to be putting on strings. These are Ernie Ball regulars that are 10 to 46s. This is kind of the preferred string that Joey likes on his guitars these days. So this is what we're gonna put on. Okay, I just installed the strings. I did wanna mention a tool that I think is really helpful um, and I've really grown to love it. It is the Ernie Ball Peg Winder. 
It's like 20 bucks. This thing is fantastic. For years and years and years, I was doing it by hand, and then you had those little plastic windy things. Never seemed to work great. This thing is awesome. I mean, it fits every peg of guitar I've ever tried. You go forward and reverse. It takes two AA batteries, and they seem to last forever. So I highly recommend uh, getting one of these uh, and keeping it with your guitar maintenance stuff. Just, it's been great. Secondly, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stretch the strings. This is a thing that I think a lot of guitar players, when they get started, don't really know about, and they put brand new strings on their guitar, and they think, why does it not sound like it's not staying in tune? I tune it up, and then I play, and then it's out of tune again. The brand new strings need to be stretched. So this tool is called the String Stretcher, and this does what we used to do sort of by hand uh, in the old days, basically trying to, like, stretch the strings. You know, you put your one finger underneath, and then you grab it with your thumb. I don't know if the camera angle can see this very well. And you would kind of stretch them, or you would just hold the guitar like you're playing it, and you would just bend the strings, you know, all the way up and try to do that or take them and pluck on them like this. I mean, I've tried everything. And then I saw a video or something. I came across this string stretcher. I know what it was. It was a guitar tech that was on tour with a bunch of bands. And he said he changes like strings on 10 guitars a day or something crazy. And he discovered this $10 piece of plastic and it changed his life. And I agree, this has been probably the best $10 investment I have ever made as a guitar player. Okay, so you're going to take this string stretcher, you hook it under, say, the low E string first, and then you're just going to rock it all the way up and all the way back. And you're going to go on to the next string. You're going to rock it all the way up and all the way back. And you're going to do this on every string. And then usually what I do is I'll tune it all back up and then I'll check it and then I'll stretch them again. And sometimes I'll stretch them a third time. Certain strings stretch more than others. You'll notice as you're tuning it up after you stretch maybe the second time, some strings don't even change. Uh, and they don't change in tune, um, but then some will. So sometimes a third pass through uh, is w what you need to do. But after that, your strings are stretched and you don't have to worry about that issue anymore. Okay, so far in the video, we've done what I would just consider to be normal guitar maintenance. We took off the old strings, we polished the frets, cleaned the fretboard, polished the guitar, put on new strings, and stretch those strings. That's something I would do, you know, periodically on a guitar just to put new strings on. I would generally go through those steps. Sometimes I won't polish the frets um, necessarily, but in general, cleaning it, new strings, stretching the strings. That's something I would just normally do. But now we're all tuned up, the strings are stretched, and we're ready for the actual setup process. So if I go to my cheat sheet, which again, you can download in the links, the first step is checking and setting the neck relief. So what this is, is again, relief in a neck is, uh, you know, how much bow this way there is in the neck. So if you can either have a perfectly straight neck, you can have a neck with relief like this, or you can have what's called back bow. In general, you would never want back bow, and you also really never want a straight neck, which I never understood. I just always assumed the best playing guitars had a straight neck. But you want some slight relief in the neck so that when you are fretting notes, when you pick a string, the string is gonna vibrate, and it needs some room to actually vibrate without hitting other frets. So it's actually desirable to have a little bit of relief on your neck. 
and that's going to give you kind of a better playing experience. You can set the action better, all with a subtle amount of relief. So how we check the neck relief and then set it, first, you're going to need just a couple tools. You're going to need a capo of some sort. You're going to need some feeler gauges. In particular, for this setup, you're going to need a 6,000th feeler gauge. Now, I bought a whole set that has tons of these. You can get them at the automotive store or Amazon, wherever. They're not that expensive. They do have like a grease all over them that over time I've kind of wiped off. Um, but Music Nomad actually sells as part of their guitar maintenance and setup kits. They sell um, feeler gauges and they only give you the ones that you actually need, which is kind of nice. Um, but for me, you know, I already had feeler gauges anyway. So you're going to need a feeler gauge. You're going to need... Uh, some type of wrench to adjust your truss rod. And, you know, some truss rods use a special key that will usually come with the guitar. Um, some of them use just a plain Allen wrench. Um, so depends on what your guitar is. A lot of truss rod adjustments are up here at the head of the guitar. Sometimes they're underneath a cover on this particular Telecaster. It's sticking right out. Um, and then also some, sometimes they're back here and they're uh, on the other side of the neck. So depends on what your guitar is, but you're going to need a way to potentially adjust the truss rod. There's a rod, if you didn't know, a rod that runs down through the middle of your neck. And you can tighten that or loosen that. And that's what's going to be able to give you that different shape of the neck is by the tension on the truss rod. Now keep in mind, your neck also has tension from the strings. So when you do this, you certainly want to have be up in tune, you know, close to tune. You don't have to be, you know, perfectly in tune, but you want to be close. And that's going to give you the right string tension. Of course, the different gauge strings all have something to do with that as well. So once you have it tuned up, then you can walk through these steps to set the relief in your neck. And then it, it does help to have uh, some reading glasses or some, you know, help to see up close. I actually picked up one of these uh, headset things. It's got a light on it. It's pretty awesome. But once I hit 40, um, I can't see up close for nothing. So in any case, those are the tools we're going to need. Let's get started. Okay, first, if I look at the checklist... Basically, we're going to capo the first fret. We're going to hold down the 12th fret with our finger. And then we're going to check the feeler gauge under the low E string at the 6th fret and see if there's room or not. You know, we're looking for just a barely it kissing the string when it's laid on the, the top of the 6th fret. Another thing we want to do is when we do a lot of this stuff for the setup, you always want to do it in the playing position, okay? Gravity and such, uh, if you just tried to do all these measurements with the guitar laying flat like this, it's not going to work out that well. So on all these, we want to do it in the playing position. So first, I'm going to fret the first fret. And again, I'm going to hold down the 12th fret with this finger. And what this is essentially doing is creating a straight edge from the first fret to the 12th fret. And we're going to be able to see how much relief we have there. So again, I'm going to put on my cool Amazon goggles. And I'm going to go to the 6th fret. And I am not touching. What you may find is that um, if you actually are touching under there, you're going to see it move the string. That you don't want. Um, if it does that, then uh, what you need is obviously more relief. In our case, um, we have um, no touch. It's, it's actually very close. But I may actually back the truss rod off a little bit uh, to have slightly less relief um, to try to get it right at that 6,000. 
So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take a, a wrench and I'm going to go to the truss rod. And to loosen the truss rod, we're going to go counterclockwise. I'm probably going to do like a quarter of a turn. Don't want to make too big of moves when I'm dealing with the truss rod. Usually a quarter turn at a time. Again, fretted uh, with the capo at the first fret. I'm going to put my finger at the 12th fret and then check the 6th fret. And that quarter turn was just enough to set that just right. It's just barely kissing the string when I'm at the 6th fret, between the 6th fret and the bottom of the E string. So that's it. I mean, step one is complete. Wasn't that difficult. Um, so if you need more relief, you tighten the truss rod, which would be clockwise. And if you need less relief like we did, you know, loosen it counterclockwise. And again, a quarter turn actually did that. So this guitar was already pretty close. Not bad. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, the next step for this guitar is going to be setting the action height. And what that is is basically the height of the strings off of the fretboard. And to do this, we need a couple tools. Again, we are going to need a capo. We are going to need, for this particular bridge, a uh, small Allen wrench. And then we also need some kind of guide, uh, some kind of gauge where you can measure uh, the string height. This is a D'Addario. Um, lots of people make them. It's a few dollars, but you really need one of these in order to set the string height. So what we're going to do, again, in the playing position, we're fretted at the first fret. And we are going to measure the string height at the 12th fret of first of the low E string. And this one right now at the 12th fret is about 70 thousandths. Now, ideally, what I would like to see is something more like 60 thousandths for the low E string at the 12th fret. So, what that tells me is my strings, my action is a little bit high. I want to bring that down some. And on this particular guitar, <clears throat> there's just, each saddle is held in place by two Allen nuts, uh, Allen screws. Um, so you have to adjust both of them to go up and down. So I'll give you a close-up view on that. As you can see, this is the saddle for the low E string. And we just have these two adjustments, one on each side of the string, that's going to raise and lower that saddle. So right now, we want to lower the string. So I'm basically going to tighten each of these a little bit. And then we just check it again. Capoed at the first fret still. We're going to check. Still a little bit high. So I'm going to lower that saddle some more. Okay. So we are now at exactly 60 thousandths on the low E string at the 12th fret, the first fret capoed. It's the distance, you know, the line of 60 thousandths is right at the bottom of that string. So that's done. Now what we're going to do is move on to the high E string. And the general guideline for these is 60 thousandths at the low E string and, sorry, 60 thousandths at the low E string, 50 thousandths at the high E string. So we're going to just take a look at this one at first. I have a feeling it's kind of high. Okay. 
Yeah, this one's way high. It's like 90,000. So the action is super high on this side of the guitar. So we're going to lower that. Same way we did before um, with just this Allen screw. Getting closer, but we got a ways to go. Okay, so we are there. The low E and the high E are now set. We got the low E set at 60 thousandths and the high E set at 50 thousandths at the 12th fret with the first fret capo. So now that we have that done on this particular guitar, this is kind of the way the steps need to, to run. Some guitars, depending on the bridge and, and how you adjust string height overall, can be done differently. But the next step is going to be setting the bridge radius. Okay. Bridge radius. What is it? <laughs> Maybe you've heard of neck radius before. So every neck has a slight curve to the top of the neck. Okay. And that's called the neck radius. And usually if you look at the specs on the guitar, they have a number. You know, 7.5, 9.5, 10, 12, 15. Um, and what that means is um, picture that you had, um, in this case, this guitar is a 9.5 radius neck. They make these gauges that you can buy in a kit for a couple of dollars. And these gauges all have numbers stamped on them. This particular one is the 9.5. And it's got a slight curve. And actually, if you had a ball that, or, or a balloon that was 9.5 inches around and you rested this on it, that would be the radius of that balloon. You, that would be the same curvature of that 9.5 inch balloon. So if that gives you an idea how neck radius came about. So... What you want is you want your bridge radius, which is how all your strings are, you know, in their height at the bridge. You want that to be set the same as your neck. So that way your strings are even all the way across the curvature of the neck. You don't want some strings lower and some strings higher. So we've already set the action height of the highest and the lowest strings. Now what we want to do is make sure the rest of them are all in line based on the neck radius. So we set the bridge radius by taking one of these radius tools and you go about a quarter of an inch in front of the bridge. And what you're gonna see is some strings are going to touch and some strings are not going to touch. At this point, I'm gonna put on my glasses again. And how you can also help yourself to understand is if you pluck the strings, some strings are ringing out free and some strings you can tell are resting on the gauge. So basically we now want to adjust the string height of the rest of these saddles so that all of them fall, you know, and are all touching as close as you can to this radius tool. So that's the next step that I'm gonna work on is adjusting each individual saddle. If it rings out freely, I know it's too low and I wanna raise it up. And if if the all the strings except for one are ringing out, you know, then I have to, you know, obviously lower that one string that's not ringing out. Um, but the idea is you get all these even and then that way, all of your strings are at the same radius as your fretboard. And it's going to give you the best playability. Okay, so I made all the adjustments, and I think we're good now. This is my 9.5 inch radius gauge. And uh, if you ever have questions, you can always just do a Google search on your guitar, and you should be able to find the radius of the neck. 
but right now you can see all of the strings are equally just touching that gauge. And if I wasn't holding my camera in the one hand, I could actually pluck on each of the strings and they would all be kind of muted. So, you know, they're all on the right radius. I did not make an adjustment to the high E string or the low E string because those were already set doing our string height or our string action. So I think we're all done with the step. Okay, we're halfway through the list of the guitar setup. Next item on the checklist is setting the nut height. So the nut right here, uh, there's grooves in it for each string to lay in there. And what we are going to check for is the height of each of those grooves relative to the first fret. So again, we're going to need some feeler gauges. There's three different feeler gauges we need across the six strings. Across the low E and the A string, we need a 20 thousandth feeler gauge. And we basically, similar to what we did in the past, we want that just kissing the bottom of that string, okay? And again, we're gonna do all this in the playing position. The D and the G string are going to be 18 thousandths. And then, I have to look at my cheat sheet, the B and the high E string are, are going to be 16 thousandths, okay? So again, we are going to check in the playing position, first the low E and the A string with the 20 thousandths gauge. And there is room there on both of the strings. So what does that mean? That means the string is not setting down inside of the nut as far as it should. How do you make it go deeper? Well, I have here a set of uh, nut files. These particular ones are from Music Nomad, and they come in different sizes. So the set that I have is essentially the uh, 10 to 46 size nut files. So there's a different file for each string slot, and of course you want to make sure you have the right one picked out. So here's the 46, which is for the low E string. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string, pull it off of the nut, put on my glasses, and I like to be right over top of it to make sure I'm going nice and straight. But I'm going to put the nut file in there, and I'm just going to give it some four or five light strokes in there. Now these particular nut files are like diamond crusted nut files. So not only do they cut the nut, but they also sort of polish it at the same time. So now we're gonna put the string back in the slot and we're gonna check it. Playing position. And again, we have a little bit more room on that low E string. So I'm gonna do the same thing, file a little bit more. I like to take my time and just do a little bit at a time because once it's gone, it's gone. And you either need to replace your nut or, I mean, you could shim the nut or put some filler down in there. But in general, just go a little bit at a time, take your time doing this. And again, you probably wanna do a slight angle towards the head of the guitar. That way you don't have some kind of angle heading down towards the fretboard. And that string, that's you want that part where the string comes off to be the highest point. Because otherwise you can get some weird string buzz or, you know, the guitar would sound like a sitar kind of thing. You don't want that. So just take your time, be careful. Again, you pull the string off of the nut. You take your nut file and you just go right over the top of it, get in the slot.
and we'll check it again. It's getting close, but I'm going to do it one more time. And there we go. So now that 20,000th gauge is just kissing the bottom of the E string on the first fret. So that's good. Now we can move on to the A string and then follow that with the rest of the string. So remember the, the cheat sheet will show this to you, but the bottom two strings are 20 thousandths. The middle two strings are 18 thousandths and the highest two strings are 16 thousandths. So we basically just want to set that nut height across all the strings. Um, and to do this, you will need a nut file set. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of different kinds out there. I did a bunch of research and I really ended up liking these Music Nomad nut files. But there's a bunch of different brands that are out there all different kinds of price points, things like that. But again, just take your time. And uh, what that's going to do, it's going to, we've already set the action across the guitar here. But if your nut height is too high on the guitar, when you play chords down here, people call them cowboy chords or whatever, you're playing down in the lower frets, it's higher than it needs to be. So basically, you can go about as low as you can, with, as long as you don't have any fret buzz. You could technically even go a little bit lower than the 20 thousandths, 18 thousandths, and 16 thousandths. Um, but in general, those should be really nice, really comfortable settings. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these so we can wrap up this step. All right, the next step in the process is going to be setting the intonation. What is intonation? Well... Intonation is making sure that fretted notes stay in tune with open notes or other fretted notes. So you could have a guitar and tune it perfectly, all the open strings be perfectly in tune. And then as you start to move up the neck and do different chords further up the neck, it can sound out of tune. Why is that? Well, I'm sure there's a bunch of physics behind it. I think it has a lot to do with when you press down a fretted note and that extra tension that puts it a little bit sharp. But basically, guitars are made with an ability to compensate for that. And it's in the bridge. So in the bridge, your saddles, no matter what kind of bridge you have, your saddles are able to go forward or back. So the idea behind setting intonation is you want a good tuner, um, preferably like a strobe tuner, I have one on my helix I'm going to use. And you're going to hit that open string, starting with the low E. You're going to hit that open string, get it perfectly in tune. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press the 12th fret of the low E string and see if that is sharp or flat. The 12th fret is an octave, so it should still be an E. But if it's sharp, what it means is that the distance between the 12th fret and the saddle is too short. Shorter is higher pitched. So we need to lengthen that. So if it's sharp, you need to take the saddle and move it back. If it's flat, you need to shorten that distance and move the saddle forward. And then you can do the 12th fret and you can also check the 17th fret. So you're gonna do this on each string as you go down through. You, you know, start one string at a time and make sure that the open string is in tune perfectly, the 12th fret also in tune perfectly, and the 17th fret. And it's all a matter of adjusting the saddle forward and back, okay? And if you go the wrong direction, you'll immediately see it on the tuner and it's not a big deal. 
Every bridge is different. I'm going to show you up close what this bridge looks like and the adjustments for the saddle going forward and back. Okay, so here's the bridge for this guitar. As you can see, we looked at this before when we were setting the action and also setting the bridge radius. But each of these saddles has a screw coming from that right side or the back of the bridge and there's a spring. So adjusting this screw back here is going to basically move the forward, the saddle forward or the saddle back. And that's what we need to do. So let's jump over to the tuner and get going. Okay, so how a strobe tuner works is basically if it's flat, you're gonna see the bars moving to the left. And if it's sharp, you're gonna see the bars moving to the right. And if the bars are still, that means you're perfectly in pitch. So. Here's the low E string. See, we're slightly flat, slightly sharp. So that is pretty good for a strobe tuner. We're pretty much dead on the money right there. So now what I'm going to do, that's open low E string. I'm going to fret and pick the 12th fret that low E string. And as you can see, we're very sharp. It's moving to the right. And if I go to the 17th fret on that A, same thing. So what we need to do is we need to lengthen the distance between the 12th fret and the saddle. So we're going to move that saddle back towards the back of the guitar. Okay, so I've made some adjustments and I brought that saddle back. So let's get the open E string perfectly in tune. Now the 12th fret. It's going up a little bit, but not much. And the 17th fret, same thing. So I think we've got this one good. There's the 12th fret again. And it's a, it's a little bit dependent on how hard you press on the fret. But I think this looks really good. So now we're going to move on and do every string like this. And uh, that then we'll have the intonation set. Okay, so I did want to do just a quick close-up for you guys. As you can see, this is the first one that I did. And I had to tighten that pretty good. As you can see, that saddle is now back quite a bit further than the rest of the saddles. But I had to do that to get that 12th fret E and the 17th fret A on the low E string all to be in tune. And so we just needed to lengthen that and move that saddle back. Now we're gonna move down the rest of the strings and make all the adjustments. So the final step in the guitar setup process is adjusting pickup height. And this is something that I think a lot of guitar players don't do or don't really know what the right height is to set them. I didn't for a very long time, but it can make a difference in the sound of your guitar. So this guitar has two humbuckers. Um, some of these measurements are slightly different if you have single coil pickups, but we'll focus on the humbuckers for now. In general, the measurements I use, and it's on my checklist, is for the bridge pickup, two thirty seconds from the top of the pickup to the bottom of the low E string, same on the high E string, two thirty seconds or one sixteenth. On the neck pickup, it's three thirty seconds on both the high E string and the low E string. Uh, some people set them slightly different between, you know, on the high string side versus the low string side. Um, but in general, I set them the same. I just have the neck pickup slightly lower. So three thirty seconds uh, on the neck pickup. And how you adjust pickups, most pickups all have uh, one or two screws on uh, either end of the pickup, and by screwing those, it either raises or lowers the pickup. Um, 
You are going to need a way to measure this. I am going to use the same scale that I used when I set my action height. There is a 32nd of an inch section on this that I'll use. So you may ask, why does this make a difference? Well, in general, the further away the pickup is from the strings, the lower the output's going to be. The closer it is to the strings, the higher the output's going to be. If it gets too close because of the magnetic field, some wonky things can start to happen. So it's a nice, it's a balancing act. And I find that for most humbuckers, two thirty seconds on the bridge, three thirty seconds on the neck, it's kind of a good starting place. And you can always tailor this a little bit more. It's really your own personal preference. Now I can see right off the bat on this guitar that there is a, uh, something weird going on. There's a tilt going on where on both the bridge and neck pickup on the high string side, it's a lot closer to the strings. And on the low string side, it's tipped way down almost into the body. And I'm going to give you a close up so you guys can see this. Okay. So here we are looking at the bridge pickup. And as you can see, things are much higher on this side than they are on this side. Okay. So that's not normal. And actually the neck pickup has the same issue going on. So we're going to use these screws here on the end. You can see these are the screws that we're going to be using to raise this side of the pickup. But again, we're going to use our scale and we're going to just set both the high side and the low side of each of these pickups to two thirty seconds on the bridge, three thirty seconds on the neck. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is put on my magnifying goggles so I can see better. And yeah, this is this is way off. We're actually way too close on the high E side and way too far away on the low E side. So I'm gonna start making some adjustments. Okay, so I've made the adjustment. So now from the top of the pickup to the bottom of the string on both the high and low side, we are at 2 30 seconds of an inch. One thing I also did was I take a flathead screwdriver and the screws that are on the very top of the pickup, I set those flush. And then of course you can play around with bringing those screws out um, with your playing, you can you can try different things, but in general, I start with them flush. And of course, you can always tailor those. By bringing those out, you will change your tone some, so it's, sometimes it's a fun way to, to mess around with your tone. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing for the neck pickup. Okay, so now we've set the neck pickup to 3 30 seconds of an inch. And again, I'm going to set all these screws, make sure they're all flush. Okay, so they're all flush. And that is it. That is setting the height of your pickups. Okay. So we've done the complete setup now. Let's just talk about everything that we did. We took off the old strings. We cleaned up the guitar. We cleaned the fretboard. We polished the frets. We put on new strings. We stretched those strings. And then we walked through the six steps of the setup process. And those six steps are setting the neck relief, setting the action height, setting the bridge radius, setting the nut height, setting the intonation, and setting the pickup height. And that's it. So let's take a listen now to the guitar and, you know, see how it sounds. Sounds any different? Let's go ahead. 
So you can see that it actually does sound better, sounds more in tune, up high. Um, I'm sure setting the pickup height, these were out quite a bit. Uh, that makes a difference. And certainly the overall setting the action height, um, having the frets polished, everything seems to play a little bit better, just feels better. Um, so now the true test is when I give this back to my son and let's see if he plays it more often than his other guitars. So I hope by the end of this, you realized I'm just a normal guy. For years, I never set up my guitars. I was scared to touch them. And now I work on guitars quite often. And I am not a guitar tech by any means, but this stuff is not rocket science. And so hopefully I've encouraged you, if you've never tried this on a guitar, to, to get a couple of the tools and, and start trying it, okay? So feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know if this is something you do all the time or if you know, this video has inspired you to take a screwdriver to your guitar for the first time. Uh, I would love to hear that. So thanks again for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.